this book, and the whole time I read Romeo and Juliet, I you thought it was a mom dog. <laughs> the whole time. But what is it? It's just, it's mom to you. It's just proof that I can't say anything right. Every day is gay day when you're Presley, but on the channel gay day only happens once per week. Hey everyone, it's Presley after Game Stock on here, and to get to gay, yes, to gay is gay day. And I'm going to be talking about The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue, which is a fantastic book. It is the first book I got for Bookmas. At least it's the first one I read. So I'm pretty sure it's the first book I got for Bookmas. And it was recommended by Princess Lady 2 and Patty Bonkok, maybe? I don't know. Um, it was a combination of me not knowing how to pronounce anything and not being able to read my dad's handwriting. And no one can read my dad's handwriting, not even him, though, so I'm fine. Um, and, yep. So speaking of pronunciation, also, um, you might have seen this already, you might have been the opening to the video, but I thought that Montague, which is Romeo's last name from Romeo and Juliet, and the last name of the main character is Felicity and Monty in this book, because they're related, I thought I was pronounced Montag the whole time. And I have read, I haven't read Romeo and Juliet, like the play, but I've read a version of it. And I read this book, and I read lots of essays about Romeo and Juliet, um, because I wanted to make an AU out of it. And the whole time, like up until about three minutes ago, I thought I was pronounced Montag. And now I swear there is a reason why I pronounced it Montag. I swear there's a something, there's something called a Montag. And something that I watched, or listened to, or saw. But it's Montague. And that makes me very furious that it is Montague and it was Montague the whole time. Anyways, that was a long tangent about Montague. Now it's time to talk about the Montagues and Percy Newton because he's here too. But he's going to be a Montague later. Um, anyway, this is A Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue. It's a really good book. It's very gay, which is why I'm talking about it today. That rhymed. Um, but yes, I love this book. I have notes on it which I might get into, I don't even know. I can talk about this book for like an hour, which I'm not going to, unless I decide to write out for my podcast. So, this is a very, very good book. It's rough, okay, so this book is very, very, very hard to talk about without spoiling, because when you get the um, summary, which I will read in a second, you expect it to be very lighthearted, like, a seven, like, and it reads, for the first part or so, it reads exactly like a slow burn fic set in the 1700s. And it kind of is. And it reads like that, and then it starts getting very heavy. Like, very heavy. And it was hard to read, but I loved it anyways, so I'm just going to put that out there. I can't say why without spoiling the entire book. It's very good. I haven't actually talked about the book yet. But yeah, so it centers around um, Monty Montague, who is the main character of this book, and it is his perspective throughout the entire thing. And he is canonically bisexual, which is actually very rare. And he is really good, and he has this gigantic, like, describe him every other page size crush on his be best friend, um, New Percy Newton. And it's written so well. It does get like a little bit NSFW, like not graphically NSFW, but there is implication and discussion of NSFW, un NSFW topic, topics during the book. But it's fine, and I love it anyways. And um, yes, it's about Percy and, it's about Percy and Monty's relationship and how it um, evolves during this gigantic trip they're doing around Europe because Percy is about to leave for school. And so Monty will be able to see him for a while after that. And he's very sad. So he gets his dad to uh, let them go on this big, and this is like, I guess, a thing that they did in um, England at the time and in Europe, where they can go, where you go before your first year of school, you go around Europe and you tour Europe. And it's called your grand tour. And I'm sure people still do it, I'm pretty sure. But it was also a thing back then. And it was, it's very good. There's pirates in this book, which are, they're very good. They're really, really good pirates, and I love them. And there's very gay in this book. 
there's very sad in this book, it's great and it's fantastic. And it is like about their grand tour and how their relationship evolves during the grand tour and how in the world Monty Montague, Monty Montague is just fun to say, so I'm calling him Monty Montague throughout the entire book, uh, where Monty Montague goes and how he can stay in such close proximity to Percy without screwing up and like confessing and stuff. So yeah, it's just like a really good slow burn. That's what it is. Now it's time to read the summary, which I haven't done yet. So Henry Monty, Henry in quotes Monty, which is the name he's called throughout the book, Montague was born and bred to be a gentleman, but he was never one to be tamed. The finest boarding schools in England and the constant disapproval of his father haven't been able to curb any of his roguish passions. Not for gambling halls, late nights spent with a bottle of spirits, or waking up in the arms of women or men. But as Monty embarks on his grand tour of Europe, his quest is a life filled with pleasure and his life filled with his quest for a life filled with pleasure and vice is in danger of coming to an end. Not only does his father expect him to take over the family's estate upon his return, but Monty is also nursing an impossible crush on his best friend and traveling companion, Percy. Still it, isn't in, still, it isn't in Monty's nature to give up. Even with his younger sister, Felicity, in tow, he, he vows to make this year-long escapade one last hedonistic, hedonistic? hedonistic hurrah and flirt with Percy from Paris to Rome. But when one of Monty's reckless decisions turns their trip, abo turns their trip abroad into a harrowing manhunt man that spans across Europe, it calls into question everything he knows, including his relationship with the boy he adores. So that's a really gay summary. Yeah, this is just an extremely gay book. So anyways, I talk about Monty and Percy a lot. Um, I'm talking about Monty a lot, I'll talk about Percy later. Right now I'm gonna talk about Felicity, because she is my girl, and she is, like really annoying at times, but she is absolutely, she reminds me a lot of my friend, who I can't name, but she's also canonically Ace Aero, and my friend's also Ace Aero, and they're both very, very snarky, and like their noses are in books all the time, and she is my gal, and I love her so much. She is very quirky and very uh, snarky and sarcastic, and she is, She's like comic relief, except she isn't there just to be comic relief. She's just really funny at times. And I have laughed out loud at some of her lines of dialogue. She's just very good. And um, yes, she is, like I said, she's canonically Ace Aero, which makes me very, very happy because you never, like, never. So I think she is the first canonically Ace Aero character I've seen in a book, like, outside something I've written or my friends have written. So that's amazing, and I'm really happy about that. Um, so there is a bunch of quotes I have on my phone, which I'm going to read for you guys that are just like little bits from the book that I, that stood out to me. Um, and the first quote is, uh, we are not broken things. We are cracked pottery mended with lacquer and plates of gold. Whole as we are, complete onto each other. Complete and worthy and so very loved. And that is just, that's, that made me like cry when I read it in the book because it was just so nice. It's a really nice quote. And then there is something said by Monty which, which summarizes Monty's personality most, which is, we are not courting danger, we're flirting with it at most. And I like that quote because it sums up Monty and the book very, very well. And then also, um, there's a thing that, like, I'm sh you would understand it if you read the book, but I hate Richard Peel. And that is the fact. That is the truth. But yes, it's very good. I feel really bad I haven't talked about Percy enough. He is very, very good. He is canonically a person of color, which is really hard in, seven, in the 1700s, and that is addressed, and it's addressed well. It's not just ignored, which makes me very, very happy. And there is pretty wild homophobia in the book, in case, like, so if you get really, really triggered by that, you might want to skip certain parts, and I'm sure there's someone online that tells you where to skip. But overall, it's just really good, it's really cute, and it has, pers and it deals with, there's a lot of issues in the book, and I can't talk a lot about Pursuit without spoiling it, but there's a lot of really heavy issues in the book that are dealt with fantastically, and it's written just so well, and it's so nice and so fluffy, and I, yeah, it's just, please go read The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue. It is, I've said this several times, but it is a slow burn fic, and it reads like one. And that makes me very happy. And it's just fluffy and nice. And I finished it completely by accident. 
And it was one of those things where I got the book and I really liked it. And so I sat down and I started reading it. And then I was on the last page. And I was scared because I wanted, I wanted to take my time with the book so I would be able to enjoy it for a very, like I still enjoy the book, but I'd be able to like enjoy the surprise and not knowing what happens for a very long time. And then, whoopsie, I read the whole thing. But there's a sequel coming out to it soon called A, um, a Woman's Guide to Petticoats and something else, which is from Felicity's perspective. And as you know, I love Felicity very much, so I'm very excited to read that book and read a book with a canonically a saver protagonist. I, and it's just, that's so cool, that makes me so happy, because there, there is canon, gay, bi, and a saver representation in one book, one book. Because normally, you'll maybe have like one bi character, maybe, I don't, and or one gay character, and never an a saver character, but all three of them are in the book, and they're all protagonists, very good. Anyways, this is getting really long. Go read this book. Thank you so much to Princess Leia, uh, Princess Leia 82 and Patty Bongcock for recommending this book. I loved it a lot. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye!